In this part, I want to do two things. The first is uh, I want to continue this Goldilocks story we had before. It's a little bit of a weird order. I've shown you the condition that was too strong to expect to prove, a global um, diffeomorphism condition. And then I've shown you what actually turns up being just right, the conclusion of the inverse function theorem, local diffeomorphism. But I want to show you something that's actually not as much as we'd like to show. But another way to say it is to split up what we are going to show into two separate pieces. Uh, because the condition of being a, a homeomorphism, a diffeomorphism, even local, it's about inverting things, even locally. And that's a, a story about one-to-one -one and onto. And so I want to just make a couple of definitions. One of them you don't see very often, but it turns out to be pretty nice um, in the context of this proof. So again, we've got f u to, let's just say r m. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We're not being super careful about the dimensions here, super specific about that. We're going to say it's locally one to one if the usual thing for every x in u there is a neighborhood that is an open set, or really just anything containing an open set, v in u of x uh, such that, and now we're not going to require anything about f restricted to v, but that it's one to one. Okay, uh, so it's just part of that definition. Now note automatically then Let's say we're going to call it G as usual, and the usual notation is F inverse, but um, it just gets more cluttered if you have more symbols when we get to the hard, the hard stuff, the big calculations. Um, this exists, but only on whatever the image of, F, of V is under F. Okay, So we have this set U, and then locally around X, here's the set V. That maps, who knows if the other part kind of gets folded over Maybe like I'll draw it kind of folding on itself. Maybe the other stuff folds over. But here, everything in here only gets hit by once by something in V. Um, and but the problem is, well, I kind of drew it too nicely. Maybe it's some weird kind of crinkly little set that's not nice, a big full fat set with uh, open neighborhoods around its points. In particular, this might not be open. And I'm not even assuming anything about continuity here. Okay, so I'm just picking out one thing. Is it locally, can we make sure it's one-to-one? -one? So you might think, you might, if you stop for a minute for a minute to think, you might think, wow, almost every function I know has this property. Well, not really true. Okay, so here's an example where that fails. Um, something that's not locally one-to-one -one is any kind of projection, or you know, almost any kind of projection map. So for example, r2 to r, x, y goes to x. So just project down from the x, y plane onto the x axis. Okay. Then, <coughs> excuse me, then this point definitely doesn't have any neighborhood where stuff in its image only gets hit once because everything gets hit infinitely many, many times. The inverse image of any point here is. A big ver a vertical segment inside, even inside this open set V. Okay, so I'm not saying projections are pathological, but they certainly aren't invertible maps, and so they're not what we're eventually going to be striving for. So this is a good thing to think of, of about something we're trying to exclude. A perfectly nice a map that we're trying to exclude. In an extension of these videos that I might make, I might talk about how to include these in the whole story that comes from the inverse function theorem. Um, it's really quite quite beautiful and important. Um, Okay, so that's something that's not locally one-to-one. -one. Okay, now what about locally onto? That's kind of the natural question. Okay, is there a definition of locally onto? Well, it comes it, it it's phrased in a little bit of a different way, um, but I'll talk about how it really is essentially local surjectivity or local onto ness. Okay, a map f again from u to r m uh, is on, on, an open map. You can just say it is open. But it's sometimes nice to not confuse it with open sets, although if you're being careful, there's not much confusion. It's an open map if um, for every, it's a very natural thing to, to, to define formally, but it's, it's not something that's necessarily obvious 
when you first think about what it means, if for every open subset V in U, the direct image is open. Okay, so important notes. Um, it sounds like, it formally sounds like one characterization, one of the most uh, powerful characterizations and general characterizations of continuity. You know, we usually, in this kind of setting, we usually define continuity explicitly in terms of epsilons and deltas, but there's a very beautiful notion of continuity that if W is open in the codomain, then, it implies here, then F inverse of W, the inverse image is open. That's equivalent. That's true for all open sets in the codomain. That's actually equivalent to being continuous. And if, if you understand that, that that's equivalent to the epsilon delta, you've got, come a long way. Okay, um, but that's not what we're saying here. And it's interesting that this, it's easily to, to confuse. People who are just learning this kind of definition often confuse it with, with this definition. Surprisingly enough, this is a, a, a rather less natural or less fundamental concept, okay? What it really is, as I pointed out, is it's really uh, local surge activity, okay? Because here's an equivalent version of it, okay? An equivalent version is that for all x in u, uh, there is, uh, let's see, how do I want to say it? Um, there is, so I, <clears throat> I want to say there is a uh, neighborhood, let's say w of y equals f of x. that is um, covered by F. What do I mean by that? It just means that F is onto that neighborhood. So in other words, i.e. we can solve y equals f of x, given a y in that neighborhood of, um, oops, we can solve, ooh, let's see, actually, you know what? Let me change this a little bit. That's what I'm missing. Let's fix an x naught. I'll draw a picture in a second here. We can solve y equals f of x for all y near, uh, near y not. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, we've got x naught, and we're going over, here's u, and here's like f of u, the image of that. Now f of u, I'm not assuming that that's all of rm, I'm not assuming, assuming it's surjective, but I take x naught, and I look at where it hits and y naught, okay? Now the claim was that any open neighborhood of x naught should push forward to being an open neighborhood of y naught. So it shouldn't collapse to something that has no interior. So that means that there should be, so for any neighborhood here, do, 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 v, that f of v should be open. That means that it's gotta have some neighborhood inside it, w, that is known to be open, like an open ball, for example, and that's what we're gonna use in, in practice. Um, it's gotta have some open neighborhood here that is all inside f of v, okay? So, um, so this statement is actually a little bit weaker than what openness truly implies, but it's really the heart of it, that I know that any y in that guy, y is in here, must be the image of something nearby x naught, okay? So locally, both in the source and the target, the domain and the codomain, I can solve this equation. I have existence of solutions. Nothing about one-to-one, -one, nothing about uniqueness of solutions. That's the other part of it we're talking about. But that locally I can solve this equation. Notice the connection to the existence problem for solving nonlinear equations. And again, that's why I started with this, with the practical aspects of that. So it turns out that one of the things we're gonna to need to show is 
that f is open, and that's going to be where that the trickiest part, the deepest stuff, and where uh, one of the methods of solving explicitly solving equations is going to come in, where that practical stuff is going to connect with the theory. So, in fact, um, if we look at what we've got, what we really want to show is local diffeomorphism. Well, let's not worry about the derivatives quite yet. Um, I think I'll actually push that to another video. Um, we want to, to be a local homeomorphism. Remember, that was continuous with continuous inverse, at least locally. We certainly need it to be locally one-to-one -to, -one to have any kind of local inverse at all. We certainly need it to be open, because if you looked at the definition, look at the definition carefully, that is part of the definition of local homeomorphism. If, that, if you don't put that in there, then you might get a situation where the, the domain of the inverse map is way too, too small. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and, of course, you want the inverse to be continuous, and we'll certainly want that as well. Okay. In fact, we're going to prove it's differential. But I wanted to put these things out there before I, I get into the nitty-gritty of the proof. We're really going to separate these out. They actually come in in rather different ways in the proof when we look at all the details carefully. Locally one-to-one -one and locally surjective, or in other words, open. Okay. So the next video, I will start diving into more of the details of the proof and try to figure out, I've laid out a lot of this in a way that you wouldn't necessarily guess if you, just, if you were trying to prove this on your own. But I want to lead us through a lot of the rest of it. Um, as long as we have this as background, in a way that maybe we can kind of guess the next step and guess some of the other notions that need to come in.